put a little bit of sound on the screen here and start a new game. Is sound important? Uh, again, it just adds to the fun and it encourages children to, uh, to play games. Right, that's super, isn't it? Now, is this one just good for video games, or is it, does it actually have practical uses as well? Uh, well, that's one important reason for buying it, but uh, there are four reasons for buying a home computer. One is for playing games, uh, one is for just investing in the future, uh, getting to know what computers can do for children and adults, uh, again, learning to program, as with the ZX81, and finally, some sort of useful application around the house. Um, and I'd uh, bring in a note of caution there again because a number of programs on the market uh, sold to be home utility programs uh, are in fact not very good at all. Uh, programs to balance your checkbook or do recipes, for example. But you're saying this one can do useful tasks? Well, it could do useful tasks if you had more storage on it. And really, uh, for useful tasks, the cassette recorder is not quite the ideal. What you want is a floppy disk here. Uh, a floppy disk can store the equivalent of a good many cassettes like that. But you do need uh, what's called a peripheral, a floppy disk unit here to run it. Right. What's this? That's the printer. Uh, that's for putting onto paper things that you can see on the screen. So you might want to write letters for people or get a print out of your monthly accounts, for example. All right. Sounds marvellous. Now, what's on the other end of the uh, scale? Well, if you add that little lot up, you're going to be paying about £600. Um, you could run a few small business applications on it, but if that's your intention in the first place, I would say go for a top-flight home computer like the Atari 800 here. Uh, that'll cost £400 plus the disk unit, but you do have a range of business software available for it, so you could use it for playing games and running a small business. Uh, I've got a thing here called an electronic filing cabinet, right, and that's really right. just a, a computerized version of a card index file. Uh, and if I press the start key here, I can get up one of the cards onto the screen. You can see it looks like a card index card there. Um, and that tells me that uh, Mr. Salmon's name and address and that his birthday is on the 4th of June. Is it much easier and cheaper just to write all these things down in a book? <laughs> well, that would be possible, but the main advantage you've got here is that, say you had a thousand names and addresses on cards, uh, by the manual system you'd have to search through them all every time. Uh, this way, if I wanted the addresses of everybody who had a birthday in December, I merely type that on the keyboard and it comes up with the answer. Right, well we're in December, it's nearly Christmas. Is this the right time to invest in a computer like these? Uh, that's always a difficult question, but we've researched it quite thoroughly in the past month or so because we've produced a how to buy your computer kit, especially for Christmas. And our conclusion was yes, uh, mainly because all of these three machines and a good many others have recently fallen in price, so they're good value for money just at the moment. Uh, I would say that if you're not desperately keen to buy a micro uh, and you could wait six to nine months, uh, there will be very good competition for the ZX81 at under £100. Right, you've been very helpful, Richard Paulson. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So a price war in the offing with home computers. But there are also computers helping to run the price wars in the high street supermarkets. And that could affect your housekeeping bill. Recognise this lot? Supermarket receipts. Now, I don't know if you bother to take yours home with you after a busy Saturday morning shopping and actually check it, but if you do, the chances are you'll end up with eye strain and a lot of confusion. Because a recent survey has revealed that over half these things are actually wrong, either overcharging or undercharging, often many pounds out. Perhaps that's not surprising, really. If you'd spent eight hours searching for the price labels on endless cans of jelly meat whiskers, you'd probably make a few mistakes, too. In this shop, cat foods don't have price labels, nor does anything else much. Now, you can hardly have failed to notice that most of the groceries you buy these days have curious little black lines printed on the outside of the wrapper. This is called a barcode. The lines represent numbers which in turn identify the country of origin, the name of the company, and the name and type of the product. At the checkout, a low-power laser reads the code, tells the computer, and you get a detailed receipt which you can take home to check. The system's been working very well indeed in the United States, so um, let's try it here. The biggest difference is here on the shelves. Now, because the computer can read those bars, there is really no need at all anymore for those nasty, sticky little price labels, which are 